Oh my god. Hey guys, how's it going out there? My name is Jesus Quesadilla, and welcome back to Let's Play The Legend of Zelda Ocarina of Time Three Heart Challenge. In the last episode, we left off being chased around by this giant Octorok. Today, we fight him and probably defeat this dungeon. So, uh, good to have you guys back here. Let's go ahead and jump right into the action. Um, this is sort of the mini-boss battle for this uh, dungeon. I know previously I said it was the tentacles, but it's actually the big Octorok. So, what we have to do... Um, actually, Navy will tell us more. Attack it from behind! In the butt! Well, gee, thanks, Navy. That actually isn't all that helpful. Um, but anyway, this guy is going to charge at you. Well, pretty much just like that. He's going to kick my ass, too. Um, what you have to do is throw the boomerang at him to stun him, and attack that giant green glowing gem on his back that is oh so painfully obvious. Um, my strategy is to go ahead and throw the boomerang at him, and he'll do either one of two things. He'll either run towards you, which is what he's doing right now, um, or he'll turn away and try to run away from you. Now, um, he's more likely to turn and try and run towards you, but if that happens, just keep throwing that boomerang, and uh, eventually he'll turn his back to you again. He can get a good jump shot on him. Uh, as you can see, it only took two jump shots with our Deku stick to get that kill. So he's actually a very easy mini-boss. And he's going to leave us a whole bunch of hearts, which is nice. And uh, we can go up on this platform, going up, 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 up. Okay. Um, well, wait, where'd Princess Ruto go? What gives, man? She should've been up here. Oh, that bitch ran off with the jewel. You never trust dames. You never trust dames. Okay. Ooh, a fairy. A fairy. Not that I really need it, but still a fairy. Okay, um, let's go ahead and make progress through the dungeon some more. We're actually pretty close to the end of it. Really, the only major thing left to do is fight the boss. But, um, in order to do that, we need to find the boss room. So let's go ahead and try and do that. Um, oh, these things are weird. Um, basically, you just... Oh, you asshole. Um, basically, first let's get rid of the Octorok, which we can do with our boomerang. Um, you just hit these things with your boomerang and it stuns them temporarily, um, basically turning them into platforms, otherwise they just wiggle around and damage you. Um, and in here, doesn't look like there's much, but when we stand on this platform over yonder, it'll actually lower, which um, brings us back into the first room of the dungeon, the one with the uh, boxes and the single jellyfish floating around. So let's go ahead and kill him. And, uh, ooh. I can't believe I haven't gotten one of these before. A magic jar. Um, yeah, enemies will drop these, and basically they replenish your magic meter, which is sweet. Um, anyway, go ahead and take one of these boxes. Uh, you may have noticed these earlier in the last episode, and I didn't really mention what they were for, but now that we have access to this side of the room, we need them to hold down this switch for us. Uh, now that we no longer have Ruto, we can use these boxes in her place. All right. Uh, let's see. And I think this is the last room before the boss. This room is pretty simple. Uh, let's first just start off by clearing out all the enemies so that they're not in our way. Get rid of you, good sir. I don't care for your face, even though you don't really have a face because you're a jellyfish. I don't care for your squishy torso and dangly limbs. Are tentacles referred to as limbs? I don't even know. Uh, but yeah, there's gonna be a good handful of these guys, so go ahead and eradicate them. Exterminate the jellyfish. And uh, there's a gold skull tall up there on the wall, apparently. I had totally forgotten about that. Um, let's see if I can hit it. Alright, one more should do it. There we go, let's just go ahead and lock on. It's actually kind of cool how the uh, camera shifts underwater when you uh, aim like that. And it actually sounds as though you are underwater, kind of like muffles the sound and stuff like that. Um, oh wait, 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 yeah, I can't just go in that door, I completely forgot about it. What a dummy. I am sorry, I'm all forgetful today. Um, let's go ahead and climb up here because there's a switch we need to hit. You know, fighting the boss isn't just as easy as strolling into her room, or his room, I don't know what gender the boss is. Um, go ahead and lock onto this dangly, uvula-looking thing. And, um, it's kind of tricky to hit, but... Eventually you find out the spacing that you need to have. And it opens up that door for us. And, uh, Link, you can just go ahead and jump down, it doesn't really matter, you're not gonna get damaged. And I hope you guys are ready, because we're gonna go ahead and fight the boss right now! All right, so wow, not even five minutes into the video, and uh, we're already fighting two big baddies back to back like that. Oh my god, what the fuck? The boss is just a jellyfish? Well, that's not too- oh my god. Um, several jellyfish? What is that? What the fuck is that? Oh my god. Oh, it's surrounding itself with them. Ah! 
bioelectric anemone baronade. Oh god. Okay, okay, you know what? I'm not even gonna do the fake screaming and yelling thing right now because you guys know the drill already. I pretty much know how to kick every boss's ass in this game. Um, of course, this boss is a lot more difficult than Queen Goma and King Dodongo, I'll give it that. It actually has varying attack patterns and some pretty devastating moves, um, especially for a three-heart run of the game. Um, first thing we're going to start off by doing is just circle strafing around it and cutting down its three tentacles, holding it up to the ceiling. Uh, once you've done that, it'll start spinning around those uh, jellyfish that it was using to protect its torso. And uh, what you have to do is hit the center of it, if that's even possible. I keep missing it for some reason. And, uh, oh well, eventually it'll let go of the jellyfish and you can kill them. Which is what you want to do, because before you can move on to the next stage of the fight, all the jellyfish have to be dead. Or at least most of them, I believe. Um, actually, I could probably run up and hit it right now. Oh yeah, I can, okay. So I guess the jellyfish don't have to be dead, it just kind of helps if you do take care of them. But, um, apparently it is completely optional. Um, something that I will also note is that there are a bunch of pots scattered around the room, around the outside perimeter, if you're low on health. Just go ahead and break a pot open, and it's probably going to have some hearts contained within it. So, you know, that's good. Um, the basic thing I have to say about this boss, I know it actually gives a lot of players a tough time if it's your first time playing the game. Um, the first time I played this game, it actually pretty much warmed me a good couple of times before I could beat it. And um, the trick that I found is that as long as you're constantly strafing, it tends not to hit you very often. Um, the only time you really get pounded by this boss is when you stand still. So just keep moving, stay on your feet, and a lot of its attacks will tend to miss you. Um, okay, so let's go ahead and get rid of these jellyfish. One more to get rid of, and that should be good. Alright, so you do have to kill all the jellyfish, I was mistaken. And it'll start spinning around the room and just causing general mayhem. Yeah, it'll hit you with a little beam blast like that one. But um, as long as you keep on moving, it will tend to miss 9 times out of 10, and it makes the fight a lot easier. But um, let's just go ahead and knock him down a peg. And yeah, when he kind of just sinks into the ground like that, don't bother trying to attack him because it will not work. Just circle around him until he brings his butt back out of the ground, and uh, you'll be good to attack him. And we basically have him on his last leg. Once he stops spawning more jellyfish to help him out, uh, you know that you've got him cornered. And uh, let's just go ahead and whack him. I think uh, once he comes out of the ground one more time, we should have him down for the count. So let's just circle around him, and hopefully we got this in the bag. And also, here's uh, Navy's text. I totally forgot to bring that up until now. Um, sorry about that, but in case you guys were wondering what she had to say about him, you can go ahead and read it, go ahead and pause the video, do whatever. But, we have defeated Baronade, and ew! Oh my god, that's disgusting. Oh god, ew, oh. Oh god, that is one of the more disgusting death animations in this game. That kind of still grosses me out even now when I see it. But yeah, guys, that brings an end to the third dungeon of the game. Um, so, you know, there's our heart piece. We gotta say goodbye to it. So sad, so hard to let it go, but alas, we must move on without it. And, uh, what the hell? Ruto's standing in the light there. How'd you get over there? Did that guy eat you or something? Oh, what's that stern look on your face? You, you're late! What took you so long? You're useless! Um, excuse me? I just saved you. I was just lonely, that's all. Just a little. Oh my god. What an ungrateful little bitch. I helped you get back the Sora's Sapphire, and you're still pissed off at me? Even after I saved you like three times in there? Seriously? Whoa, what the hell? Oh god, too close for comfort. Personal space, personal space. Bad touch, bad touch, I need an adult. Okay, I think we got away from her. Uh, oh god. Oh no, she's coming for you, Link. She wants your dick! You, you look cool. Cooler than I thought you would, anyway. Just a little, teehee. Well, anyway, you saved me, so I guess I'll reward you with blowjobs! What do you wish? Just tell me. Um, hmm, nothing really. Hee hee hee, don't be shy. Oh god, Link, she wants to get inside your pants! I can tell what you're thinking. Uh, no, okay? I'm not thinking that. My mother gave it to me and said I should give it only to the man who will be my husband. Oh god, Link! No, don't do it! She's gonna give you her virginity! Alright! I'll give you my most precious possession! Zora's Sapphire! Oh, okay, yeah, I'll take that. Sure, why not? Uh, you wanna give it to me or you just wanna do the backstroke? 
Hey, princess, over here. Whoa. You obtain Zora's Sapphire! This is the spiritual stone of water passed down by the Zora. Her most precious possession? You don't know what she's talking about, but you've finally collected all three spiritual stones. All right, sweet day. Go back to see Princess Zelda. All right, gladly. Don't tell my father. Oh no, King Zora is gonna kick my ass. Shotgun wedding, shotgun wedding. Um, okay guys, so, that is it for that dungeon, and, um, actually, you know, we got a little bit of time left on the episode, so instead of ending it off, there's something we can do really quickly while we're still here in, uh, Jabu Jabu's little swimming hole. If you come over here to this little island, first of all, roll into the tree and get a gold Skultola. What were you doing in that tree? Be honest. Okay, let's go ahead and pick that up, and, uh, wow, I wonder how many gold Skultolas we have by now. That's probably what I'll do in the next episode. I'll probably go ahead and turn some of those in. Um, let's go ahead and lay down a bomb here, though, next to this inconspicuous set of boulders. And there's a huge fucking hole in the wall. Okay, let's go ahead and go inside. And, yes, another great fairy's fountain. So it's time to receive yet another power. Um, well, I can't get it without my ocarina. So let's go ahead and play that shit. Has he lost his mind? Can he see or is he blind? <laughs> oh no. It's the great fairy of sluttiness! Seriously, is that the only outfit that you own? Well, I guess it's technically not the same fairy. Is that the only thing that you and all of your sisters own? Well, hi there, Jesus! I'm the great fairy of cotton picking! I reckon I'll give you a magic spell. Please don't diddle it, take it. I just had to fit a southern accent in there somewhere. You've received a John Deere tractor. Oh my god, seriously? Enough with the damn theatrics. Just give me the power. You got Furore's Wind. This is warp magic you can use. Warp when you are in danger. You're in the danger zone. You will teleport to the warp point. When you first use the magic, you'll rec you'll create a warp point or something. When you use the magic again, you can either dispel the warp point you created last time, or warp to that point. Um, it sounds more useful than it really is. Remember, you can use for Roar's Win only in dungeons that have a dungeon map hidden inside, okay? Y'all come back now. When battle has made you weary, please come back to see me. Well, I guess I should have said y'all come back now at the end of that, but anyway. Alright, so for Roar's Wind, um, honestly, I would show it off, but I can't really do that because you can only use it inside of dungeons, which... It's fucking useless. There's no point to using it. I usually don't even get it during most playthroughs, but I decide to get it this playthrough just cause. Um, and you know what? Since that power is so lame, let me go ahead and show something off. You guys might have noticed these scattered throughout Hyrule, and I haven't really taken the time to explain them. Um... They're these weird little rocks, and when you hit them with your sword, it says what the time in the game is. Um, it's kind of arbitrary that they do that. However, there's a cool Easter egg you can do if you place a bomb next to one of them. Just, uh, give it a second. Countdown. We'll have liftoff in T-minus three seconds. Yeah, that is some weird shit, isn't it? The first time I saw that, I seriously flipped the hell out. I couldn't believe that. Um, is it ever coming back? Well, okay, goodbye there, Gossip Stone. I believe that's what they're called anyway. Gossip Stones, I think, is their technical name. But um, anyway, guys, thanks for joining me here today. I think that's enough for today's episode. Um, honestly, I don't know what we're doing next time. Maybe we'll do some side quests. I'll think about it off screen, and you guys will just be surprised when I post the next video. But um, anyway, guys, it's a whole lot of fun. Thank you for joining me here today. If you really enjoyed the video, please consider subscribing to me. Once again, my name is Jesus Quesadilla, and by subscribing to me, you can stay updated anytime new videos are posted to my channel. But um, anyway, guys, that's enough for now. The fun will keep rolling on, though, in the next one, so I'll hope to see you then. And until next time, this is Jesus Quesadilla signing out and wishing you well. Peace!